called a diddly bow and I'm going to show you how to make one. Here's what you'll need. You'll need a piece of wood roughly three foot long. I recommend a two by two or a two by four. I'm using an old weathered piece of wood from a fence. You'll need a guitar string. I'm using a low E string. This is a 46 gauge. The low E string is the thick wound string. You'll need two screws. These screws I'm using are an inch and a quarter long. You'll need two large nuts and bolts. These are two and a half inches long. They're about as big around as my little finger. Two of those, each with a nut. You'll need a tape measure or yardstick. You'll need a pen, pencil, something to mark with. You'll need wire cutters. You'll need a screwdriver for the screws. You'll need something made of glass or metal to use as a slide. I'm using a glass shot glass. There's lots of things you can use. They'll all sound a little different. Look around later, see what you can find. You might or might not also want a guitar pick. It's fine to just use your fingers. And that's everything you'll need. We'll begin construction by using the tape measure to make two marks on the board 26 inches apart. Uh, you can make different sizes of diddly bow. Um, they can be maybe 30, they can be 22. You can have fun with making different sizes and see how they sound. For now we'll be using 26 inches. So make a mark on one side and make another mark on the opposite side 26 inches from the first mark. Again, this doesn't have to be terribly precise. After you've made your marks, put a screw on each side of the board. Use the screwdriver to drive the screw into the wood. We'll want to leave, oh, roughly a half of an inch of the screw protruding above the wood so we have plenty of room to wrap the string around it. So, put a screw on each side of the board where you've made your mark. The screws should be 26 inches apart. After both screws are firmly attached, we'll use the wire cutters to remove the ball at the end of the guitar string. Snip! Now, wrap the string around the screw two to three times, and then wrap the remainder of the string around itself. We want to make a very strong connection because this will be under tension. Be careful not to cut your fingers. So, give it a tug. Make sure you've got it nice and tight. Now pull the string as tightly as you can and wrap it around the opposite screw. Once again, wrap the string around the screw two to three times, then wrap the remainder of the string around itself. You can use the wire cutters to remove any excess string. Once again, be careful not to cut your fingers. The ends of the string are very sharp. Make sure you've got a good connection. After the string has been securely attached to the board, place one of the bolts under the string and slide it as close as you can to one of the screws. You should begin to feel a little tension on the string. Now place the other bolt under the string, slide it as close as you can to the opposite screw. This will put a lot of tension on the string. This is where we begin tuning the instrument. Moving the bolt closer to the screw will increase the pitch of the string. You can further tune the instrument by tightening one of the screws. And that's everything. You now have a diddly bow. Here's how to play it. You can strum the strings with a guitar pick or your fingers, whatever you prefer. You'll need a slide that should be glass or metal. I'm using a shot glass. Use the slide on the string to change the note you're playing, like this. Now that we can play various notes on the diddly bow, we'll mark where some of those notes are so that we can find them more conveniently later. 
I've added masking tape to the top of the board so you can see what we're doing a bit more easily for this step. Use your tape measure and measure halfway between the two bolts. It doesn't matter how far apart they ended up. Simply find the center, make a mark halfway between the two bolts. Now the marks we're making are approximate. You always play a diddly bow by ear. The marks are simply to give you some notion of the general vicinity of the notes. So, halfway between the two bolts will give you a full octave above an open string, like this. So, that's one of the most important marks we'll want to make. The next thing we're going to do is look for the notes in the minor pentatonic scale. If you're not a guitar player, it sounds like this. So we're going to look for those notes on our diddly bow and this is just simply something you do by ear. It's actually not that difficult. Let's begin. Okay, there's one about there. We make a mark. Yeah, roughly there. We'll make a mark. Roughly here. We'll mark the third note. Next note is close to the full octave. Mm, roughly there. Now, we've got five marks. That's the minor pentatonic scale. Penta means five. We only need those five notes and we have a blues scale. Keep in mind there are lots of other notes on the instrument. We simply marked a scale that's very convenient for playing blues style music. And if you're finding all of this confusing, don't worry about it. Just make a diddly bow, play with it. When you find a note you like the sound of, make a mark and just have a good time. This is for you to enjoy. It's your instrument. You can play it however you'd like to. And if you're having a good time, you're doing it right. So, we have an instrument. We know how to play it a little. Looking good here. If only we could make it louder. You can amplify your diddly bow by simply placing it on a cardboard box. Leave a small opening in the front. Here's the difference it'll make. So, if you have a cardboard box, you have an amplifier. Another option, if you're a woodworker, is to add a cigar box to the body. In this case, um, I've got a hardwood neck made of some small piece of hardwood I found. Um, the body is a cigar box. It has two small sound holes and it works in the same way the cardboard box worked previously to amplify the sound of the instrument. And if you'd like to make it very loud, we can add an electric guitar pickup. This is a single coil electric guitar pickup that you can purchase on the internet for something like $10. Um, this particular one came pre-wired with a volume and a tone knob and a quarter inch output all ready to put into a guitar. Cost me something like nine, ten bucks. So if you look around Amazon.com, probably eBay, lots of places have these. It's a very inexpensive electric guitar pickup. I'm simply going to tape this to the diddly bow um, and we'll see what happens. Give me a moment to put it all together. Okay, here we have the pickup taped to the board. 
the wires have a piece of tape to hold them in place and I'm running a cord out of the diddly bow to an electric guitar amplifier. I'm using a little distortion and a guitar pick this time. Here's what we've got. The diddly bow originated in the Deep South. It's based on West African instruments, which were played by tapping the string with a stick. So you might try tapping the strings on your diddly bow with a pencil or whatnot. Diddly bows originally were a children's instrument. They're something parents might build for their child to help the child learn note recognition and to learn about rhythm. If the child were particularly adept at the diddly bow, they might have a better chance of talking to parents eventually out of an actual six-string guitar. Of course, sometimes kids made their own diddly bows, and if you didn't have a guitar string, the next best thing was the steel wire on your mom's broom. The kids would tell each other, it only hurts to play the diddly bow once. That's because when your mom realizes you ruined her broom, you're probably going to be spanked, but then the diddly bow is yours, so it only hurts once. And now you know all about the diddly bow, or at least you know all I know about the diddly bow. Um, make yourself one, play it, have a great time. Mm -hmm.